The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 23rd, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that? Well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in, but you've got a question, we've got you covered. Send me an email, send it early, send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got all the U.S. indices trading the upside. Dow's up 108, three tenths of a percent, eight tenths for the S&P, or 35, one and four tenths percent for the Nasdaq, 100, 208, seven tenths for the Russell, 13 points, one and seven tenths for the semi, 63 points. Gold is up 1%. That's a $19 move. Silver is up 4%, 3.7%. That's an 87 point move, 87 cent move. Lights we crude off 37 pennies. Natural gas down about three cents, and the 30 year treasury is up one point and 11 ticks. Print out at 119.22. So, leading the charge, by the way, dollar wise, the upside, you got Mercado Libre up nearly 2% or 24 bucks. Super Micro, 23 bucks, 9%. Restoration Hardware, 6%. $20 move there. Netflix up 21, 5%. Broadcom up 2%. $16 move there. In the case of movers to the downside, those shakers, $18 move, 10% for Lancaster Colony Corp. Foot Locker down 33%, nearly eight bucks. Lululemon off eight bucks, 2%. Elevens Health down 550, that's a 1% move. And Nike down four bucks, that's a 4% move to the downside. Let's begin by taking a look at, well, let's go figure out where we're at market condition-wise, market breadth-wise, what I should say. Look at a couple different things. First, this is a 30-minute time frame chart for the ES Mini. 227 trading above resistance, 106 below. So that is bullish. If we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, it'll take a moment here to calculate and populate. 56 above, 9 below. So for this time frame, that's the 30-minute time frame. Market conditions are bullish from a market breast standpoint. As we take a look at what's going on, the 60, the 240, the daily, and the weekly, when we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, they've all switched over to bullish for 60, 240, and daily. It's the weekly that still is bearish with 19 above and 31 below. If we take a look at the S&P 500, the S&P 500 is in much worse shape. Uh, you are only bullish for the 60 minute time frame. Still have negative market breadth for the 240, for the daily and for the weekly out there. So we'll just keep that in mind as we take a look at those intraday charts. The other piece of, um, of market breadth information that we could take a look at is that New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator. As we pointed out, well, I guess they pointed out after the air yesterday, I sent a, uh, posted something in the den. As I noticed in the New York Stock Exchange, we had a divergence that was forming. That divergence where price was moving lower, but the advanced decline oscillator had formed higher lows, an indication of a turn. We're certainly getting that today. Now, this advanced client oscillator is still below zero. I can guarantee you, well, I can't really guarantee you, 
But what I can share with you based upon this indicator is that sellers are still the ones in control. So we're going to call this nothing more than a counter trend move. How would that get resolved? Well, the bottom panel shows a spot volatility. Index. It just shows it slightly. The spot volatility index is still above its 50-day. The 50-day exponential moving average is 1547. If price closed below that, well, then we'd have to uh, consider shifting gears out here. But right now, what this is telling us is that we're just in a counter trend move position. That could change, obviously. Let's go now take a look at the equity future contracts, the daily, all four of them. See what kind of signals they're providing us. We're going to see the white background charts. Now, if you heard the uh, 10 o'clock update, you know I mentioned the uh, profiles inside of the ES Mini. And I said we have two different sets of profiles. Now I'm going to show you the second set. We take a look at the second set. What we have out here is profile with support at 43.69. We have a bearish structured profile. 44.66 is the center and 45.05 is the top. You can see the oscillator and change line. It's right at about 44.66. That is the likely price target for the ES Mini. If price turns down from there, granted it has support at 43.69.48, but that would be a bearish indication. The real bearish indication would be a – you're not – I'm not – oh, shoot. Sorry about that. Sorry there. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Glad that we caught that early. Thought I had made the change, but it did not. I did not. Now you've got those four charts out there. So you can see that oscillator and change line. You can see that new profile. 43.69.48 is what this shows as a bottom profile. You know they get around that to 50 for sure. And then you're at 44.66.75 or either 44.67 and then 45.05, 45.06 really for the top of the profile. So that oscillator and change line, which just recently changed colors, if you should see those charts now, Peter, they're up. They're definitely up. Um, is that uh, that's where price should run into resistance. Now, the NQ, we can see right now, it is taking on the resistance level. That's the resistance of its oscillator and change line. It's trading slightly above it. 15,171, we're at 15,185. It's going to be about the end of the day. Now, where price is trading at 1112. This could be the extent of the counter trend move. Now, if price closes above this level, then we'd be looking to move to 15,358. And we'll take a look at the intraday charts to try to get a feel if there's any kind of topping signals while the daily time frame chart is up at a resistance level. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, today it is likely going to form a TD9 count bottom. It will do that so long as price does not close above 34,536. If it closes above that, this pattern gets negated. And we don't have any kind of a bottom. Now, I don't have a bottom pattern in the NQ or the ES or the Russell 2000. In the case of Russell 2000, it also has two different sets of profiles. We're going to take a look at this set of profiles that shows support at 1850 and resistance in the 1888-1875 zone out there. So that's what the daily time frame charts are showing us. Let's dive down a little bit. Let's go take a look at the um, intraday charts here for the NQ. The NQ, again, on a daily basis up at resistance. As we take a look at the longer term or shorter, uh, the five hour, the four hour, the two hour chart, she's the four hour chart, shows us a negated TD9 count top. But this bar does not complete until 2 p.m. So saying that we have negated that signal, it's a little bit premature. But if price does close about 15,118, that would then suggest a move up to its next breakdown level at 15,330. Uh, you've negated the TD9 count top on the 60 minute time frame, no topping signal on the 30. It's only the 15 minute chart that has a potential topping pattern. A TD9 count top is going to confirm at 1115, less than a minute from now. And at 1130, that pattern will complete. Watch the 15 minute time frame chart. It's got the signal for the NQ. We should then see price retrace and pull back towards its oscillator and change line, currently printed at 15101. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So one of the questions that was posed to me in the Tiger's Den is, uh, is it possible that the NQ is going to go make a run for its July uh, first high out here? Was it July 1st? It was uh, July, the July high, I suppose. Uh, that's the uh, trading day from uh, July 17th. And that's a question that's kind of hard to uh, answer, and I'll explain the reason why. If you ask me the question about the ES Mini, my answer would be different than asking it about the NQ. Now, why is that? Well, if you take a look at these different arrows that are on my screen right now, the blue arrows show all the buy the dips and the buy the dips that were at the bottom of the weekly profile. Only if we get a close below the bottom of weekly profile do we really have some kind of change in trend signal. Well, you can see that last Friday, not at the cash market close at 430, but by the time the futures market close, price was able to regain the bottom of that profile at 4377.50, really 4377.25. Just let's be a little bit conservative there. So that level is held. So in the last instances where price now the red arrows show when price actually closes below the bottom of a weekly profile that begins a change in trend that doesn't mean there aren't rallies you've got to move up and down you've taken a look at the stevie two-step or three-step or four-step uh, that we typically see uh, consecutive moves higher and closes out there but here you can see once you crack that level that creates the problem. Well, the ES Mini did not. If I was asked that question, will the ES Mini get back to its size? I'd say it really has that possibility. And I would say that possibility really improves if price can close above 43, I'm sorry, 44.35 on Friday. It's only Wednesday, so we got a long time to go before we get there. The reason is because that is a bullish structured profile. And typically, when you close above a the center of a bullish structured profile, price will gravitate up towards the resistance level where the sellers are at. So with regard to the NQ, it did close below the bottom of its profile. Now, 
weekly profile. If it closes back above it this week, which maybe it's going to, that's at 14,865, then it could signal to you and I that that move on Friday of last week was a false breakdown. If we take a look at the Dow, you can see that prices held a rising trend line or a couple different rising trend lines. In the case of the Russell, price did hold the bottom of its weekly profile. That was at 1844. So, John, your question becomes very difficult for me to honest ans uh, to answer honestly. I, I, because I, I, I can't. Um, is, does it have that possibility? Well, we've got to take things one step at a time. So we're going to take things one step at a time. That first step is going to be that 15-minute time frame chart to provide clues for us. And Nancy was asking about Microsoft and Apple. She likes to trade those on an intraday basis. And eventually, I will get to those charts there, Nancy. There's several that are in front of you. But as long as I'm on the 15-minute time frame chart and you trade those intraday, because their impact inside the NQ, please get access, if you don't already have it, to the intraday chart for the NQ, especially if you like to trade those two instruments, which I know you do, because we've got almost 23 plus hours worth of data in patterns that are then going to assist you with regard. I cannot put up a 10 minute chart for Apple or Microsoft and get this or 15 minute charts because we've got the 15 minute charts up right now and get the same signal. So it just doesn't work like that. We'll take a look at those intraday charts. Instead, you really want to tie it to what's going on inside these charts. And the only topping pattern that you and I, we were able to find out here, came from that 15-minute time frame. And those are the TD9 counts. And we can see that in the ES and the NQ, they're going to complete that pattern in about eight minutes. Uh, in the case of the uh, Dow, it's going to complete that pattern at 1145, and the Russell will complete at 1145 as well. What should take place is we should see these instruments move back and pull back to their oscillator and change lines. So if you're looking at intraday patterns out there, and I would, of course, say, you know, maybe you're better off trading the NQ or one of the derivatives and the ETFs and taking short-term trades, just basing it off of these intraday time periods out here. But here, all four of the equity future contracts are pretty much synergistic with regard to their TD9 count signals. Now, just because we have a TD9 count does not guarantee that price is going to move lower. But the cool thing about this pattern is we know that if price closes above the high of the pattern, that's going to be on the ES and the NQ, whatever the 15-minute high is as we speak right now. So it's during this segment between 11.15 and 11.30. If price closes above that, that tells you about a strong move higher, a strong momentum move higher out there. So it's kind of a cool thing because it's where you have the least amount of risk and you've got to wait for about 15 minutes to find out if you were right or wrong. So that's my best overview with regard to the equity markets. We're still, we're, we were expecting, anticipating a bounce because of that oversold condition that you and I have looked at for the past couple of days. So let's go ahead and get to some of those requests out there. Uh, the first one coming in from uh, from Tom G. And Tom wanted to take a look at a couple of symbols. DHT is one of them. He's in this from a dividend standpoint. Well, Tom, yesterday, what DHT did on a daily basis was it confirmed a Rosemont indicator top. So this suggests that price wants to move lower. Now, what it's doing as we speak right now, it's back inside its profiles. The top of that profile is 961. If price closes inside it, it opens up the door for 934, 906, and 880. So just suggesting that you are going to feel a little bit of heat out there. What's the only way that that won't happen? If price holds 940. And 940 is its green oscillator and change line for the weekly time frame. So I would say 940 is a level to be watching like a hawk. On a monthly basis, price is back inside its monthly profile, so it's not giving us a real clear signal there. So the weekly is bullish. The daily has shifted to bearish. It did that yesterday. So it's now going to try to start creating its impact on that weekly time frame chart. And if price closed below 940, you're most likely looking at 891 when we take a look at that weekly chart. So do I like the charts for DHT? I don't like them as of yesterday with that Rhodes Mintum indicator top out there. So hope that review of DHT assists you. Let's go take a look at your next request. Your next request was to take a look at NEWT. And as we look at NEWT, what do we have here? Well, this has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top right now. We don't have any kind of bottoming pattern. What we do have is a new profile that formed three days ago. That new profile has support at 1745, 1745. 
and resistance at 1816 out there. If price closes below 1745, what it does, Tom, it opens up the door for a move to its breakout level of 1625. On a weekly time frame, this has a TD nine count top. That TD nine count top formed on July 28, the week of July 20, end of July 28. That is still in place out here. Price may be pulling back to test its area of support between 1589 and 1627. If you were not in this and you were asking me where's a place to buy, I would say between 1589 and 1627. I would say also if we close below 1745, that is likely the outcome out here. That is ticker symbol NEWT and DHT. Those were all. Oh, Tom has another one. I take that back. That was a take a look at the SMHs out here. As we take a look at the SMHs, they happen to retain their TD9 count bottom. But if you and I go look at the semiconductor index, it doesn't look like this at all because it negated that bottom. Here's what we've got in the SMHs. We can see it's got a fairly wide profile. It is bearish in structure. The bearish sell zone is between 153.08 and 154.24. Where did yesterday's rally end? Right at that sell zone at 153.08. So in order for the semis to get really bullish out here, price must close above 154.24. If it does that on a daily time frame, price should run up to 158.79. John or Z inside the Tiger's Den, I'd say to help answer your question with regard to the NQ, watch the SMHs. If they close above 154.24, we start inching towards that ability to get back to that July, I think it was the 17th high or so out there. So that's what we've got for the SMHs. When we get back to this break, we're going to Avgo, PFE, Baba, Apple, Microsoft. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Attention traders and investors. Are you ready to elevate your game in the stock market? On August 23rd, join Basil Chapman, the mastermind behind the renowned Chapman Wave methodology and a subscriber-exclusive 90-minute webinar. From 4 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern, dive deep into the secrets of the 914 moving average, decode market turns, and get a head start on the stock outlook for September and October. The golden opportunity is free for all opening call subscribers. And if you're not on board yet as a subscriber, here's the deal. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Zero risks, all rewards. So what are you waiting for? Visit the front page of TFNN.com now and secure your spot. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. 
Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So we've got our line of demarcation for the ES Mini and the NQ for their 15-minute time frame. It's 44.41.50 for the ES Mini. It's 15.198.25 for the NQ. You close above that on a 15-minute basis, tells you about a strong upward momentum move. If we close below the prior bar's low, that's going to signal to us that price is going to go make that move for that oscillator and change line uh, level out there. So watch the NQs for their 15-minute time frame. Now let's get back to some of those requests that came in. This next one from David H. who wants to take a look at Avgo. ABGO is the uh, ticker symbol Broadcom out there. And his question is, will it retest its highs out here? So here's what we know about uh, Broadcom. Number one, this formed a TD9 count bottom pattern. It formed that pattern back on August 11th. Last Friday, price was testing that area. Uh, well, was it Friday? August 18th. Yeah, it was Friday. And uh, that level held. So you've got a valid daily bottom out here. Price has made its way back or is trying to make its way back into its profiles. So first you need to see a close today above 867.81. If you get that, then your next battle, David, is going to be at 882.59 and then a battle above that 897.37. If you can clear those battles, you have a little bit of breather, but that little breather, bit of breather is going to end at 931. That's its TD9 count breakdown level. That's the daily chart. The weekly chart shows that price is consolidating with inside its profiles. You actually close below it for two consecutive sessions out here. This would suggest that maybe we're just seeing a counter trend move and price would uh, typically find resistance where it's trading near, which is 879.76. That's its daily or its weekly oscillator and change line. On a monthly basis, you've got a TD9 count top, which suggests that over time, price should make a move back to 757.55. What I would do, David, is I would watch that 867.81 like a hawk. If price closes back below that area, it could be telling us it wants to make another move back to those lows. If it takes those out, we'd be looking at an A to B equals CD to the downside. So will it make it back to its highs? This is going to have to prove itself to you. And that first bit of proof is staying back inside that week, uh, that daily profile level. So I hope that helps you out with that request. Let's go take a look at Pfizer. This is for Alton. And Alton uh, has got some long positions inside of Pfizer. Right now, trading out at about 36.72. Alton, price is trading above the top of its daily profile. And as long as price can remain above 36.54, when I say remain above, I mean close above 36.54, this should continue to move higher. The weekly time frame chart has a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom. With price finding resistance where, the, where some sellers reside at the center of its profile, and that level right there is priced at currently 36.86. If price can move above, close above 36.86, its next battle will be 37.86. In the monthly chart, price has made its way back to its breakout level. That can be a bottom, and that would be at the 35.76 level. So watch the daily. Watch 36.54. If price closes below that, price should then go test the 36.01-ish area. If price remains above 36.54, but most importantly on a weekly basis, if it can close above 3686, you're likely to get that move to the 3786, maybe even 3987 area. That's what we see when we take a look at those charts for Pfizer. Alton also wanted to take a look at Alibaba. B-A-B-A -A is the ticker symbol. Alibaba uh, has a, what does it have? I really don't have a bottoming pattern, but we do have price attempting to get back inside its profile. It'll accomplish that task today with a close above 89.65. If it does do that, Alton, we would expect or anticipate price will make its way up to its green oscillator and change line currently printed at 92.41. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, price is also trying to maintain and stay with inside its weekly profile. In order to do that, it needs to continue to close above 88.67. And on a weekly, a monthly chart, you just have a good old fashioned consolidation within profiles between 82.14 I'm sorry, 82.12 and 99.54. So Alibaba, the key to watch here is going, one key is going to be 89.65. Another one shows up on my 30-minute chart that I noticed, and that's going to be 91.19. 
So you got a nice road momentum indicator bottom on a 30 minute basis. 91.19 is his TD nine count breakdown level. If price can overcome that, you should see a further rally inside of Alibaba. If it stops right there, well, this has been nothing more than a counter trend move, but I would still watch 89.65. If price closes above that today, you still have a chance for that 92.41 area. So I hope that that helps you out. Greg M. wrote in, and he wanted to take a look at XBI. So let's go take a look at XBI. And what he was interested in here were support and resistance levels. The resistance zone on a daily basis for XBI is between its bearish structured profile area, between 79.45 and 80.46. Support would be down at 76.42. That is the bottom of its daily profile. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart shows resistance not too much further ahead at 79.73. 79.73 happens to be the top of its weekly profile. If price can close above that on Friday, then what we've been looking at, Greg, is a move up to 81.54. And then that 79.61 area, was it 79.61? 79.73. 79.73. If I said 61, I was looking at something. 79.73. If price can close above 79.73, then old resistance could become new support. So that would be an area. 81.54, that's its weekly oscillator and change line. That is definitely resistance at this stage of the game. So there's your support. There's your resistance. If I take a look at a short-term time frame chart for XBI, we'll put that up here. What do we have? We have price trading right into breakdown resistance at 79.72. That's a level you'd like to see price close above on a 30-minute time frame. So, Greg, I hope that that helped you out as well. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Let's get to Nancy's questions. She wanted to take a look at Apple. So for that, because she's traded on an intraday basis, we're going to take a look at this set of multi-time frame charts. This provides us with 15, 30-minute chart. So on a 15-minute chart, just an example where we've got those TD9 count tops inside of the ES and the NQ. We don't have that inside of uh, Apple out here. So that's why I say best with regard to trying to trade intraday, make sure you've got those intraday NQES charts uh, signals as well. What we do have out here in Apple is on a 30-minute basis, that means at 12 noon, this should complete a TD, it will confirm a TD9 count top. The pattern will complete at 11.30. This would suggest that price would pull back. Boy, I would be paying attention to what's going on inside the NQ for its 30-minute time frame, more so than I would with regard to Apple, but I'd use both signals out there. So that's what I see with regard to intraday signals for Apple out here. Let's go ahead and put the Microsoft charts up. Now, this is going to take, because I've got really 8, 9, 10, 11 different charts that are being updated here, when I go to this set of screens with all these multi-time frames, that's why I've stopped using them all together. It just was slowing the show down too too much but here we're still going to wait for him we've got about 30 seconds before we go to the break out here hopefully it's done by then microsoft also on that uh, 15 minute time frame has not formed a td9 count top as we speak but we know that the nq has now unlike apple microsoft does not have a 30 minute td9 count top in fact as i take a look at topping patterns out here all I see are resistance levels that price needs to take on. And that first one is going to be 328.75. If price can close above 328.75, that suggests you run to 330.26. And if price can close above 330.26, that would suggest to move up to 335.14. So we don't have any kind of bearish signals inside of Microsoft for its intraday time period. We just have the next battlegrounds, which we just identified for you. So I hope that that helps you out as well. No more requests that I see. So, folks in the Tiger's Den, if you've got something you'd like me to look at, please post that in there. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com, but send that very quickly. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we've got the uh, charts up here for light sweet crude, and where light sweet crude is really struggling here, John is uh, John C is in the uh, bear structured monthly profile zone. And that's between 84.77 and 88.31. That's the level 88.31 that price must close above to suggest that uh, light sweet crude is getting ready to continue its move to the upside. If I look at the weekly time frame chart, you've got a new profile that has formed resistance at 84.16 and support is at 75.79. Um, if we take a look at the daily time frame chart, now here's what I, you gotta watch. If price closes below the candle says from August 17th, that low is 78.60. If price closes below that low, this will establish an A to B equals CD to the downside. And John, I would suggest then that price would go target 74.38. We do not have that pattern to 11.43. I don't know what it will look like at day's end or even tomorrow, but right now, price is still below the bottom of that daily profile. Now, it may get back above it uh, as, uh, the, as the market comes to a close. In order to do that, you need to see it close above 79.16. Now, on an intraday basis, I got bottom patterns all over the place, whether it's a 30, the 60, the 120, the 240, and the 300, although this bar has not completed just yet. So that could be premature. But I do have bottoming signals. So what are the next areas of resistance on a move higher? Well, on the 120, the 240, and the five-hour charts, it's clearly their oscillator and change lines. So let's go with 79.38. If price can close above 79.38, then we've got a chance to move even higher. Now, that next higher level would be 79.84, and that is the TD9 count breakdown level on a 30-minute basis. If price can overcome that, then 81.24 and 81.72. So that would be the progression of where those battles would unfold for you, uh, John. Right now, I'd say watch this uh, 7938. And then to the downside, watch that uh, candle says from August 17th, 7860. 
You get a close below that, then we've got an A to B equals C and D to the downside. So I hope that helps you out with regard to lights, weed, crude. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in or, or, or make that request inside the Tiger's Den. We've also got a request inside the Tiger's Den from The Dog. And The Dog wants to take a look at Tesla. It says that's the only stock we haven't covered today. So let's go take a look at it. And Tesla right now, do we have what do we have we've got a buy the d point pattern we have that we talked about that yesterday it formed this first it has a a a, a, a island bottom pattern out here we gap to the downside in between august 17th and august 18th and then we gap to the upside on august 21st that established that uh, uh that established that island bottom reversal it also formed a, a three river morning star so we've got that confirmed by the d point pattern what price did yesterday was it ran right into resistance at that oscillator and change line so that's your resistance zone and what I would be watching here dog is see how price handles 236 40 two ish because price is going to move up and down if price can overcome that red oscillator and change line then we should see a move to 243.91 ordinarily i would say we would be seeing that because price is above the center of that bullish structured profile but what we also know and i don't want to be ignorant of yesterday's price action price tested and rejected that red oscillator and change line so that's the level that tesla needs to overcome the weekly chart which has a td9 count top shows a close below the bottom of its profile. Now, we need two consecutive closes to confirm that change in trend signal. That would require a close on Friday below 231.93. On a monthly time frame, price is bullish for Tesla. What price did so far this month, it's pulled back and it's tested and it has rejected the top of its profile. The top of the profile, which was old resistance, may become new support. So in order for Tesla to really prove itself, the first thing it's got to do, dog, it's got to move above 236.39-ish. And then if it can do that, 243.91 becomes the fight. And if it can move above that, then we're off to 266.47. So one step at a time, we take a look at gold, we take a look at oil, we take a look at Tesla, we take a look at any instrument. Speaking of that one step at a time, let's go take a peek in on those 15-minute charts. Let's go see how they are acting or reacting. So we'll pull those up here. We should have completed TD9 count tops across the board, and we do. So we take a look at that 15, whoops, hold on, hold on. See, I'm in the wrong spot here. Let's get uh, the current data. So now we've got a new profile that just formed, uh, that formed at 1145 inside of the NQ. So we've got some new resistance and support levels, resistance being the high. That's up at the uh, 15,197 area. It's not the high high. And we've got the center, at 15,163, and then below that, 15,074. Oh, all the way back down here. So what's really key here, there's going to be two different areas. The first area is going to be the center at 15,163. Now, you know I would typically say, hey, if price closes below that because of the bear structured profile, it's going to make a run for 15,074, the bottom of that profile. True. However, price is trading above a green oscillator unchanged line. And as long as price remains above that, we have more of a neutral-ish than a bearish signal. Close below it tells us momentum has been lost for the 15-minute time frame, and price should then get to 15074. We have new profiles for the ES Mini. They're bullish in structure. The top of the profile, 444150. The center and bottom, 4424 and then 4418. But its oscillator and change line, which is green, becomes its next price target to the move to the downside, should it continue to move downside. And that's at 44.30 out there. If price can get below that, then we're looking at that 44.18, 44.24 level. In the Dow, the level we're watching right now is 34.451. No new profiles there, nothing inside the Russell 2000. Its level of support would be down at about the 1867 area. So again, you close above the high in the NQ, 15,198.25 on a 15 minute basis, the 15 minute TD nine count top will get negated and suggest higher price. 44.41.50 for the ES Mini. Price close above that, we're headed higher. Now inside the Dow, we can give you that number. It's going to be 34.507. I can give you that number inside the Russell as well. That number is going to be 1875.80. So for the most part, at least for my 15-minute time frame, you've got the numbers to pay attention to with regard to the play-by-play, -play, what its intentions are right now. Its intentions are to pull back to support. But if it takes out resistance, we're headed higher. So hope that helps everybody out with regard to the play-by-play -play at 11.49 in the morning. What else do we want to take a look at? Well, I think we should go take a look at the uh, components or the primary components 
that make up the U.S. dollar index. Because what we've seen so far is rejection of the TD9 count top. So to do that, that's on the U.S. dollar. Well, if we take a look at the euro, it is going to complete where the dollar completed a TD9 count top yesterday. The euro is completing that pattern today. Now, I'm going to assume at this stage here, the low of the day is in for the euro. That low is down at 1.0802. Write that down in your pad of paper. Why? If price closes below that, the euro is headed lower. The euro will head down to the 1.0696 level and the U.S. dollar index is likely headed higher. If we take a look at the U.S. dollar Japanese yen, although I don't have a bearish reversal candle, it clearly has now lost its momentum. And that will, will, will maintain that as long as price closes below 145.55 today. If that's the case, that suggests a further move lower, which would weaken the dollar. The yen gets stronger in this chart here as it moves lower versus the U.S. dollar index. The Great British Pound looked like it was going to bust right through that buy the D point pattern. That buy the D point pattern formed right back here as price was testing at 1.2621 level. But that support, which continues to hold, but also resistance holds out here. And that's that red oscillator and change line printed at 1.274. The euro may have bottomed. It's got a TD9 count bottom. And if this is going to move higher, well, the first target would be 1.0969. And if price can close above that, it'd be 1.1065. See you with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So the uh, next question is from uh, Joe uh, by email. Joe wants to know where the next level of resistance is for the junior nugget. 
It's actually trading above it right now. So let me just change screens here. So I've got the uh, a more accurate uh, uh, feed for you, and I can provide that information. So what you see here right now in the junior nugget is price is trading above its bear structured daily profile resistance zone. That resistance zone is between 3039 and 3127. So Joe, if price can close above, 3127 today, the next resistance level that was on my other charts would be its TD9 count breakdown level. And that's at 3324. At 3231 on a weekly basis, you've also got resistance. That's its oscillator and change line. So with regard to the junior nugget out there, your resistance area is still 3127 unless price closes above that today. If you get two consecutive closes above 3127, then a counter trend move to the downside, if that's all a downside move was, would find support at 3039 out there. I don't see any other information that can help you here, but I would also be paying attention to the GDX because here I believe the junior nugget is more than a one-to-one -one ETF out there, and you want to take a look at those one-to-one -one similar to the GDX. And right now the GDX is trading above 3240. 30, I'm sorry, 2844. 2844 is the top of its daily profile. And so a close above that is going to suggest a further move higher. Move higher to where? Excellent question. I would say a TD9 count breakdown level. Well, the TD9 count breakdown level for the GDX is all the way up at 3175. That would be a heck of a move. But before the GDX we can say that's where it's headed. We have to look at the weekly chart and the monthly chart to understand where sellers are lined up. Well, this looks like we are potentially two weeks below the bottom of that weekly profile. So we're still below it no matter what. So 29.12 is going to be another area that price would have to overcome to suggest that we have a further rally. If we close the week below 29.12, then a counter trend move inside the GDX to the upside would find resistance at 30.21. And so you'd have to kind of incorporate that into your decision making there, Joe. So I hope that that helped you out. I hope that I helped out everybody today. You certainly helped me out with all those requests. So I'll expect the same tomorrow, hopefully. So have a wonderful Wednesday, folks. Be safe out there. And I'll look forward to seeing you on Terrific Thursday. Take care.